YouTube, welcome back. Today, new, today we have the last video in our series, uh, System Design Fundamentals. Today, we will talk about sharding. So, let's just scroll down and let's just try to talk about what is sharding. And before talking about, with sh about sharding, we will, basically, when we talk about sharding, we talk about database scaling. Like just imagine that you have a database and this database is scaling and scaling and scaling. And what you can you do about that? You have two choices. You have a vertical scaling and horizontal scaling. Horizontal scaling, which is known as shorting. The vertical scaling, uh, also known as scaling up, uh, is the scaling by adding more power, com more power like CPU, RAM, disk, etc. To, uh, to, the, to the existing machine. Uh, there are some powerful database servers. According, for example, Amazon, uh, you could get us to get uh, like a database from Amazon up to, oh, this is not good uh, draw. So you can get a database from Amazon up to, um, I guess, 24, uh, 24 terabyte of RAM, which would uh, terabyte, uh, terabyte, 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 which is, which is a significant big, um, uh, big, big, Big machine and so powerful machine and actually in fact the stack overflow in 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 2013 had over 10 million monthly subscriber users uh, 10 million uh, unique users but it only had one master database however just using only one database can i just go back yeah only using one database has comes with serious drawbacks um one you can add more uh, CPU or RAM. Like let's say that we have this this database, it gets small. I can just add more CPU and RAMs. I can add more. I can add more. I can add more. To uh, but there are hardware limits. Like we can just add CPUs forever. It doesn't work like that. If you have a large user base, a single server is not enough. If, if we have a lot of database one database is not enough one server is not enough and um there is a helicopter outside let me just close the door uh, close the w window and come back to you just give me one second so yeah so the uh, as other thing that makes this uh, way is quite problematic is that let's see that let's just go back Let's say that we have a one database. If this database, for, for example, went down, okay, the full data, the full our our data is gone. So we have a greater uh, risk of a single point of failure. Lastly, the overall cost of vertical scaling is high. Like powerful servers are more expensive. It's they are really expensive. So what we can do is that we could go with the horizontal scaling. Horizontal scaling also known as sharding. It's it, the practice is, uh, is practice uh, of adding more servers. So let's just uh, try to compare them. So let's just go here. Can I, yeah, let's just go here. So let's say that we have vertical scaling, we have a machine. If this one is not enough, so we add bigger machine. And if this one is not enough, we are even bigger machine, okay? But until some point, we will not add more because we have limits. In sharding, you add, uh, you add uh, sharding, uh, you add, you separate, it, you add more servers, like you add more machines. Like for this one, we have a small machine, so we delete it, and we, we replace it with this one. This one is not enough, so we delete this one, and we replace it with this one, so we only have one machine. By sharding, you have, you have multiple machines you're adding more and more machines and more and more machines so like sharding separates large data uh, base into smaller more easily and manageable parts called shards and each shard let's say that we have six shards here okay and each uh, each shard um uh, and each shard uh, each shard shares the same schema though the actual data on each shard is unique so for example uh, let's say that we have user data let's just delete all of that let's just delete all of that so it will be quite uh, uh, 
Okay, let's do that. Let's see that we have four shorts. Okay. Oh. And in this full short, we have a user ID. Let's say that we have a hash function. And this hash function like user. Oh, okay, it's not good to make it, to make it like that. It's not good practice. Let's say user, uh, it's by user ID. And we mod it by four, we hash it by four. And uh, basically, when we hash the actual function, the value will be sorted in a specific short. So yeah. So let's say this is short zero, one, and two, and three. So as you can see from this example, user data is allocated to a database server based on uh, user ID. Like anytime you access uh, a data, a hash function, this is a hash function, okay, is used to find the corresponding short. In our example here, we using user ID uh, hashed four or like modeled by four is used uh, as a hash function. If a result equals to zero, the short we will we uh, the uh, the short zero is used to store the fetch uh, data. If results equals to one, the short one equal uh, the short one uh, should uh, uh, short one is used to, uh, to 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 store its data, and so on so forth. And um, the most important factor to consider when implementing a sharding strategy is to choice of the sharding key. So uh, sharding key, um, which is this one, okay? And I will talk about the sharding key and the hash function in the next video. We will talk about the hash function a lot. So sharding key, also known, known as a partition key, consists of one or more columns that uh, determine how data is distributed. like. As I can see here, like if 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 the function if the if the, if this function if this hash function results is zero, we will store it here in this. We store the data in the zero one. If the if this function results is one, we store it. We store the data in the one in in short in the index one, and so forth two and so forth three. So um, user ID is sharding key, as you can see here. So a sharding key allows you to, ret uh, uh, to retrieve and modify data efficiently by routing database queries to the correct database. So when we, when choosing a sharding key, one of the most important criteria is to uh, to to choose a key that can evenly distribute data. Um, and sharding is 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 a great technique to scale the database, but it comes with um, with some some complexity. It's to use a lot of complexity. Uh, first one is the resharding data. So for example, let's say that this sharding function, uh, let's say that we have a new server we're adding because we have a lot of data. And this sharding function is no longer, it's, it's, it's by four. So basically, the sharding function will not return four at all. Let's assume that this sharding function will not return any four. So basically this data will not have any 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 items. And in the other hand, all the other databases, all these, all these, all these servers are are packed or full with with data. So we have a problem with undistributed data. So the resharding data is needed when we have one a single shard could no longer hold more data due to uh, rapid growth that we have like all of these shards can no longer uh, hold the data. Uh, uh, second, certain shard might uh, uh, experience shard exhausting faster than other due to uneven data distribution. Um, basically, one of the shards had a lot of information and a lot of data more than anyone else because it's, uh, uh, the hash function doesn't distribute all the data or all the amount uh, perfectly so when charge uh, uh, exhaustion happen it requires updating the sharding function and moving data around uh, this is what we call consisting hashing so basically we are hashing all the time when we add server we we, we change uh, some some of the values that are coming to the consistent hatching so we make sure that we are distribute all 
of the uh, the data in the in in, in uh, to all of the servers evenly. Uh, the second problem that comes, which is the celebrity problem, uh, this also uh, called a hotspot key problem, and this one excessive uh, access to uh, uh, a specific shard could uh, cause a server overload. Let's say that we have a celebrity like Selena Gomez or something, or, or, or like uh, or like uh, uh, Messi. So uh, and we store uh, Messi in in like a specific database, and a lot of people are interested in Messi, so they will try to access. Uh, the data of Messi, so we we call the database a lot about Messi. So um, uh, let's let's imagine that. So the for 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 and and this could and, uh, this could put a lot of um, a lot of load on the short. So uh, for uh, for a social application, that uh, short will be overwhelmed with uh, read operations. To solve this problem we may need to allocate a shard for each celebrity. So maybe we put one shard for Messi only. Each shard might be even required for the partitions. Um, uh, lastly, we have the join and the denormalization. So once a database has been sharded across multiple server, it is hard to perform join operations and across uh, across database shards. Uh, a common workaround is to uh, denormalize de the database so that queries can be performed in a single table. So maybe we don't know what is the um, de, uh, uh, nor, uh, normalized database. So basically what that means is, and by the way, you don't have to know it because, but just I'm saying it because it's something good to understand. So in database design, normalization is a process used to organize data in a relational database effic uh, efficiently. Uh, the goal of normalization is to reduce data uh, redundancy and improve data integrity and to make it easier to update and maintain the database. So normalization is typically uh, uh, carried out by breaking down a large complex table into smaller. Uh, to smaller related tables while ensuring that each piece of data is stored in one place. This uh, is done through a series of rules um, the, uh, known as uh, normal forms. Uh, the most commonly used normal forms are, uh, are uh, the first through uh, fifth. Uh, but, uh, but you, what is first through fifth? Okay, it just, we're getting out of there. <laughs> We're getting out of the hand right now, but this is what its normalization is doing. Yeah, okay, and uh, and uh, and this is what its normalization. But how can we solve this one? Like, uh, let me just say something here. Okay, so uh, basically. Uh, uh, <sighs> What we are, yeah. So basically, um, when when you have this one, we use denormalization to solve uh, uh, this problem. So like a common work allowed is to denormalize the database so that queries can be performed in a single table. So we put the table in one single thing. Ah, uh, yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot. Sharding is a tough part. Sharding is really a tough part. So basically, what we should do in our design to update it. It's basically to uh, oh no, it's basically what we do here is to add like uh, this database will be full of uh, more uh, small uh, oh no no this is really let's just take this one like that yep and like so. And let's just put it here, and we have like short one, and short two, and short three. So this is what we do for the database to scale it up, uh, to scale it out. Sorry. Uh, let's say that one, two, and three, and uh, and yeah, that's it for. Um, for uh, for the Java for JavaScript for the system design fundamentals, I hope you like my content. Uh, 
Vielleicht mal gerade den Schuss auf Subscribe ein, dann auf Geschenk und never miss a video and see you in future problem guys.